Shema Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you're doing excellent today. Today is unfortunately called Woden's Day after the Norse god Woden. But we will call it day number four. Four. (laughs) Because our Sabbath is coming up soon and we are excited to be with you today. We're going to be studying Leviticus chapters 12 and 13, talking about clean and unclean and humans who might be clean and unclean not animals like we read about last time so let us pray to our elohim bible b-i-b-l-e bible b-i-b-l-e okay here we go O Yehovah, the great and awesome God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the God who rules the whole world, the master of the universe, we love you and we thank you so much for having chosen us from out of the world and brought us into your family through your love and your sacrifice on our behalf. We love you and we thank you for all of the wonderful blessings that you have brought into our lives. We pray today, Father, that as we open up your word, that you will speak to our hearts and minds and teach us your ways. Help us to love you in spirit and in truth and teach us how to do that. Thank you for your word. Help us to understand it as best we can. Let your spirit work through us to understand it and glean or gather new understandings that we may not have had before. Show us your mysteries and the ways that you operate. In the name of our Messiah, Yeshua, we make these requests. Amen. All right. So this is called purification after childbirth for a woman, after she has a baby. Now, Yehovah said to Moses in chapter 12, Say this to the Israelites, A woman who becomes pregnant and gives birth to a son will be unclean ceremonially for just seven days because she has just, I mean, I don't know, you guys have probably never seen a woman giving birth. It's pretty hardcore, and there's lots of blood and yuckiness that comes out with the baby. I mean, you might have seen pictures of yourselves when you were babies. When they first pull the baby out of the mom's belly, it's covered in yuck and muck and goo. And the first thing they do is wipe it off and clean it. Because <laughs> there's all kinds of unclean fluids. <clears throat> Blood and something called placenta. Just just yucky. You could puke if you were able to see it. But since you're a baby, your eyes aren't working quite good yet. <laughs> so yes, when a woman gives birth, it is pretty hardcore. <clears throat> And there's stuff coming out of her, you know, and it's like unclean. So it says, if he gives birth to a son, she will be ceremonially unclean for seven days afterwards. Just as she is unclean during the time when she is bleeding to wash the eggs out of her uterus. Mm. It's a little complicated, I know. On the eighth day, the boy child is to be circumcised. You know why they circumcise a boy on the eighth day? No. Well, <clears throat> it's because scientists have discovered, and they didn't, of course, know this when God gave them the instructions, but of course God did. When he gave them the instructions about that, scientists later discovered that the human male body produces a certain chemical that, cl- that causes blood to clot you know what blood clotting is? Mm, no. Cool. If I take my knife <clears throat> and I slice Evan, <laughs> or I slice Hayden, blood will come out of the cut, right? Mm-hmm. But what will happen after just a you know, couple minutes is the blood will begin to get thick, and the thickness of the blood will stop more blood from coming out. 
when blood gets thick and turns crusty, that's called clotting. Otherwise, if it just continued to flow, then all your blood would come out. But God put a special agent, a special chemical in your blood that when it's exposed to air, it begins to clot and become thick and it stops the blood underneath from continuing to come out. <clears throat> and scientists discovered that on the eighth day of a boy's life, that chemical in his body is at its strongest. And so that is when they trim the extra skin around the front of your penis so that when, if you bleed, it you have a clotting agent that stops the bleeding really quickly so it's the safest don't be looking down at your penis <laughs> it's... <laughs> don't worry about your penis yes you guys were circumcised and it went great every male child of Israel is circumcised <clears throat> so they were circumcised on the eighth day because that is when the blood will what clot really well what about what? Females. Females don't have a, a penis, so they don't get circumcised. Mm. Now then, the woman was, must wait 33 days. Oh, Dad. Yeah. Are your videos supposed to be appropriate to public? Yes. Uh, you know, that is not... Um, well, this is for children who are, you know, your guys' age, you know, and it's, it's not... It's never too young to understand that you have a penis. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's it's okay. Mm. It's okay. It may sound... I know it's a little uncomfortable to think about and talk about, but, you know, it's real, and it's something that people need to know about, so we're not ashamed. Now, the woman must wait 33 days to be purified after her having given birth. She must not touch anything sacred or go into the, the holy place until the days of her purification are over. If she gives birth to a daughter, for two weeks the woman will be unclean. Now that is very strange. I have no idea why that is that a woman would be unclean for seven days if she has a boy, but 14 days if she has a girl. That's a strange thing. There might be some wisdom guy from long ago who has some ideas about why that is but I don't know what it is now when the days of her purification are done <clears throat> whether it's a son or a daughter she is to bring to the priest at the entrance to the tent of meeting a one year old lamb for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering he shall offer them before Yehovah to make atonement for her, and then she will be ceremonially clean from her flow of blood that came when she had the baby. And that's exactly what the parents of Yeshua did. Um, now listen to this, and this is what happened with Yeshua's mom and dad. These are the regulations for the woman who gives birth to a boy or a girl. If she cannot afford a lamb, she is to bring two doves or two young pigeons, one for a burnt offering and one for a sin offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement for her and she will be clean. Now, when Yeshua's parents were not, they didn't have a lot of money, so they couldn't afford a lamb. So when Yeshua was born, they brought to the priest two doves. It's very interesting. And now we talk a little bit about skin disease. Because a skin disease is not good. In fact, there have been some people that we know, and I won't mention them on camera, that would be embarrassing, but there have been a couple of people that we know that have gotten a skin disease that is incredibly infectious and begins to eat your flesh that's pretty hardcore and so skin diseases are pretty serious business and you want to contain them and keep the people who have them away from the healthy people until it is fixed and that's what this section is all about in chapter 13 of Leviticus is how to keep the people clean so he says Yehovah said to Moses and to Aharon, When anyone has a swelling 
or a rash or a bright spot on his skin that may become infectious, he must be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of his sons who is a priest. And the priest is to examine the sore on his skin. And here are some signals that you look for to see if it's a deadly thing that can pass around to other people or whether it's going to be okay. If the sore has hair on it that has turned white and the sore appears to be more than skin deep, it appears to go under the skin, you know, it is an infectious skin disease. And when the priest examines him, he shall pronounce him unclean. <clears throat> if the spot on his skin is white but does not appear to be deep into the skin but just on the surface and the hair has not turned white, the priest will put the infected person in isolation for seven days, so he won't be around other people. And on the seventh day, the What's priest isolation? means by yourself. They'll put him in a house by himself so that he won't come into contact with other people to maybe make them sick. And then the priest will go in and after seven days and examine him again. And if he sees that the sore is unchanged and has not spread, then he is to keep him in isolation one more period of seven days. And then on the seventh day, the priest is to examine him one more time, and if the sore has faded and has not spread around even further, the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is only a rash. The man must wash his clothes, and he will be clean. But if the rash does spread around to other parts of his skin, after he has shown himself to the priest to be pronounced clean, he must appear before the priest again. And the priest is to examine him, and if the rash is spread all over his skin, he will pronounce him unclean. It is an infectious disease. Infectious means it is infected and can become able to infect other people. When anyone has an infectious skin disease, he must be brought to the priest. The priest is to examine him, and if there is a white swelling in the skin that has turned the hair white, and there, and if there is raw flesh in the swelling, that means it's red and raw looking, like you rubbed it really, really hard with sandpaper, and it's like red, that's raw flesh. And if there is raw flesh in the swelling, it is a chronic, meaning continuous, skin disease, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean. He is not to put him in isolation because he is already unclean. We don't need to do the test. We know he's unclean. If the disease breaks out all over his skin, and so far as the priest can see, it covers all of the skin of the infected person from his head to his foot, the priest is to examine him. And if the disease has covered his whole body, he shall pronounce that person clean. Since it has turned all white, he is clean. But whenever raw flesh appears on him that is red and kind of warm and hot, he will be unclean. So raw red skin is an indication of an infection. So that's good to know, right? When the priest sees the raw flesh, he will pronounce him as unclean. The raw flesh is unclean. He has an infectious disease. Should the raw flesh change and turn white, he must go to the priest. The priest is to examine him, and if the sores have turned white, the priest shall pronounce the infected person clean. He will then be clean. When someone has a boil, what's a boil? I don't know. It's a, a large bump on the skin that is filled with fluid, and it's very painful. When someone has a boil on his skin and it heals, and in the place where the boil was, a white swelling or a reddish white spot appears, he must present himself to the priest. And the priest is to examine it, and if it appears to be more than just the surface of the skin and goes down a little ways into the skin, and if the hair on it has turned white, the priest, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is an infectious skin disease that has broken out where the boil was. But if, when the priest examines it, there is no white hair in it, and it is not more than skin deep, and has faded, then the priest is to put him in isolation for seven days. <laughs> if it is spreading in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is infectious. So spreading, spots that spread, are actually not good. 
But if the spot is unchanged and has not spread, it is only a scar from the boil and the priest shall pronounce him clean. When someone has a burn on his skin and a reddish white, a burn, no, that means when you get burned by fire. <clears throat> when Why someone, somebody get burned by fire? Oh, on accident, probably. When someone has a burn on his skin or a reddish white white spot appears in the raw flesh of the burn, the priest is to examine the spot and if the hair in it has turned white and it appears to be more than skin deep, it has turned infectious. It just means that you've got a burn but then it got an infection and it's kind of getting bad. That can definitely happen. If you, let's say, were not in a clean place, you were out in the middle of the wilderness and you didn't have any soap and water to clean yourself, and you got a cut just from, you know, scratching your arm on a tree limb or something. You know, bacteria and germs can get into that regular little cut that normally would have been fine because you would have washed it with soap and water. It can become infectious and cause you to actually die because the disease can start to grow and it gets into your blood and it can kill you. It's called a de deadly, you know, infection in the blood because of a germ or something like that. So whenever you get a cut, <clears throat> that's why mommy always washes your cuts and puts some stuff on them to keep them clean. So if you get a cut, you got to keep it clean or it can become diseased. So that's what we're talking about here. The, pre the priest shall pronounce him unclean if it begins to look raw and, in and sore and swollen. It is definitely infectious. But if the priest examines it and there is no white hair in the spot and it is not more than the surface of the skin and has faded and then the priest is to put him up in isolation for seven days and on the seventh day the priest will examine him again and if it is spreading to the skin the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is an infectious skin disease. If however the spot is unchanged and has not spread in the skin but has faded away it is just a swelling from the burn and the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is only a scar from the burn. Now, if a man or woman has a sore on the head or on the chin, the priest is to examine the sore, and if it appears to be more than skin deep, and the hair in it is yellow and thin, the priest shall pronounce that person unclean. It is an itch that has become an infectious disease on the head or the chin. But if, when the priest examines this kind of sore, it does not seem to be more than the surface of the skin, and there is no black hair in it, and then the priest is to put the infected person in isolation for seven days and when he examines him on the seventh day and the sore and if the itch has not spread and there is no yellow hair in it, it does not appear to be more than the surface of the skin he must be shaved except for that spot and the priest is to keep him in isolation another seven days and on the seventh day the priest is to examine the itch and if it is not spread in the skin and appears to be no more than skin deep the priest shall pronounce him clean he must wash his clothes and he will be clean but if the itch does spread and the skin in the skin after he is pronounced clean, the priest is to examine him. And if the itch has spread all over the skin, the priest does not need to look for the yellow hair. The person is unclean. If, however, in his judgment it is unchanged and black hair has grown on it, the itch is healed. He is clean, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. When a man or a woman has white spots on the skin, the priest is to examine them, and if the spots are dull white, it is a harmless rash that has broken out on the skin. That person is clean. When a man has lost his hair and has become bald, he is clean. <laughs> I'm sure Johnson will be happy to hear that. <laughs> All hair? Just the hair on your head. If he has lost his hair from the front of his head and he has a bald forehead, he is clean. So certain, there are certain types of baldness, you know, that like some people have hair growing around the sides, but the top, the whole top part goes bald. Some people have hair back here, but the front part goes bald. Some people have baldness all over. So there's different kinds of baldness. But he says, 
He's still clean if he has gone bald. But if there is a reddish-white sore on his bald head or his forehead, it is an infectious disease breaking out on his head or his forehead. The priest is to examine him, and if the swollen sore on his head or his forehead is reddish-white like an infectious skin disease, the man is diseased and is unclean. And the priest shall pronounce him unclean because of the sore on his head. So it looks like a sore that grows on your head could cause you to become bald, but Johnson, our friend, does not have that. He just has a bald head. Now, the person with such an infectious disease must wear torn clothes and let his hair be kind of wild-looking, cover the lower part of his face, and cry out, Unclean! Unclean! As long as he has the infection, he remains unclean. He must live alone. He must live outside the camp. So if you're unclean and you have been declared to be unclean, you must cover yourself and look unclean and tell everyone near you I am unclean do not come near me that would be pretty bad right mm-hmm. you got no friends except for other unclean people <laughs> which I suppose you can't infect them because they're already infected but that would be pretty bad to be unclean you can't be with your family and friends and you can't go and worship God in the temple you can't even go into the community because you are unclean now this does not happen by chance this is the result of sin. Remember, I don't know if you remember this, but when they were going uh, after they had left Egypt and they were in the wilderness, Aaron, his Moses' brother, and Miriam, his sister, kind of got a little jealous about Moses because God was speaking to Moses and doing all this stuff with Moses, and they were, like, jealous. And they said, Moses, you think you're too cool. Hasn't God talked to us too? Aren't we just as good as you? And God struck Moses' sister Miriam with leprosy because she wanted to be super cool. It is just what Yeshua said later on. The person who wants to be super cool should pretend like he is not anything special. Then you're super cool in the eyes of God. If you think you're something super cool, and you want to be seen by people as being super cool, you are not cool in the eyes of God. So Miriam got a little presumptuous and wanted to be special and cool like her brother Moses. She was jealous of him, and God struck her with a plague of leprosy, but only for seven days to teach her a lesson. She had to go outside the camp and stay out there for seven days. So that's kind of tough. That's definitely kind of tough. So next, we will talk tomorrow, or the next day maybe, about cleansing, getting clean from infectious skin diseases. Which remember, when Moses, I mean when Yeshua healed that person who had leprosy and told him go to the priest, uh, there had never been a person who had been healed of leprosy before. So that's a first. That's a new phenomenon. And it had been a long time. So that's it today for infectious diseases and skin lesions and boils and blood and yucky... And all dad's yuckies. (laughs) What would you like to show me, Evan, what you have on your picture? What do you got? Uh, You can try to guess one.